to further this conversation is Eric Miller. He's the president of the Rideau Potomac Strategy Group, cross-border consultancy focusing on trade, supply chains, and government affairs. So you are the perfect guest uh, right now. Thanks for being with us. Uh, if you don't mind, can we do a bit of a tariffs 101, Eric, to start? How will this 25% tax or tariff work? So essentially what will happen is that when a Canadian good goes to enter the U.S., U.S. Customs will collect a 25 percent tax at the border that will be payable as a condition of importation. So it's essentially adding 25 percent to the cost of everything that Canada sells who and is collected at the U.S. border. And who pays that 25 percent? The exporter will pay that 25 percent. And so what this means is that Canadian goods will get a lot more expensive going to the United States. And those costs may get passed through to consumers. But the level of tariff will certainly mean that costs will be borne in large part by Canadians. It sounds, though, like there could be pain on both sides of the border. Am I wrong? This is we have an integrated economy that has been built up over three decades and many in the United States aren't aware of this and aren't really focused on this. But yes, there will absolutely be pain on both sides of the border. The auto industry, as it's structured, cannot effectively function without free cross border movement of trade, which has existed in that sector since 1965. The energy sector, 28 percent of Canada's exports. Were you to see tariffs on exports of Alberta oil and natural gas, for example, that would directly increase the power bills of consumers in the Midwest and the South and California and other parts of the United States. So it's essentially making life more expensive for Americans while hurting Canada and its investment climate. Has there ever been a potential disruption like this before in Canada-U.S. trading? No, there, there hasn't. This would be I think, and it's, I don't want to overstate it, but I think this would be one of the greatest economic crises of our lifetimes. Because Canada is built as an economy of trade. It's always been an export economy. And when you go from a situation of having free and open trade to a situation of significantly more expensive trade, that will have significant knock-on effects and it will show up significantly in GDP. We've heard the numbers 2.4 percent, uh, but you will see very profound impacts in every part of the Canadian economy. Trump also mentioned that uh, Mexico and China will also be um, subject to these tariffs. Me China will have an extra 10 percent added on top. My question for you, Eric, is around the USMCA. Isn't there some sort of protection against slapping tariffs on within that deal that was reached a couple of years ago? So within international trade rules, there are always provisions that allow governments to take action based on national security. And Mr. Trump is undoubtedly going to use the 1977 International Economic Emergency Act, which gives him very broad authority to do pretty much anything he feels necessary, including put tariffs on goods from other countries coming into the United States. And what you really see is that trade agreements fundamentally are built on norms. And when one country is bound and determined to violate the norms of the agreement, it's very difficult for others to really use legal instruments to force them uh, to take a different direction. What we've seen uh, already in the automotive rules of origin case, which uh, happened a few years ago, is the U.S. lost and basically said, I'm not going to implement my the changes I need to make. So there is an erosion of norms. And so I don't think the lawyers will save us this time. Eric, how do you think Canada should respond? Are we looking at a potential tit for tat situation where we impose tariffs on the U.S.? So number one, Canada needs to try to get an understanding of what are the border measures that Mr. Trump is really trying to really would like to see addressed. And there are some issues on the Canadian border in terms of southbound migration, in terms of narcotics. But what is his definition of success? At the same time, you have to see that Canada will respond in kind with tariffs that deliver pain to American consumers. In addition, I think there should be some calls made to allies in Europe and Asia because it's Canada today and they will be next. And so this is not something that will stop with Canada. 
but I, I think we're in a situation where, in many respects, it's every country for themselves unless we can find some way to effectively reason with the United States on not taking this kind of radical action that will end up only hurting it and will certainly end up hurting Canadians. And finally, I want to ask you, some observers say this is a whole lot of bluster. Trump is saying this, uh, you know, to open negotiations on USMCA or, as you say, take a closer look at what's happening at the border. Others are saying we really need to take him seriously. Where do you fall on that? Donald Trump is not a politician who says one thing in a campaign and governs another way. He says what he wants to do, and he tries to do it. Remember, he did declare Canadian steel and aluminum a threat to national security, and he absolutely intends to carry through with this. We should also not delude ourselves into thinking that once the initial pain of the tariffs are felt, that he will somehow see reason. He is a politician at the height of his political powers, and the one guiding force in his political life is a belief in changing American trade policy and implementing tariffs, which he believes is a way to make America great again, but really is a way to make America poorer. And so Canada has to be prepared for the long haul here, and it has to be prepared to use any and all instruments that it has at its disposal to avoid these going into effect to begin with and to deal with them if they do. Eric Miller, he is the president of the Rideau Potomac Strategy Group. Eric, so glad you were able to join us today. I really appreciate your time with us.